A couple people have sent me this video recently from a jazz rock band called Marvin. In the video, a couple members of the band are sitting in a food court or something, and the guitarist is demonstrating a musical device called Enclosure. He explains it very much in the context of gypsy jazz a la Django Reinhardt. In his example, he takes an A minor arpeggio and plays a scale tone above and a half step below every note of the A minor chord in straight 16th notes. So it's part of a very basic gypsy jazz sort of approach to improvisation. And it sounds awesome. Essentially what it does is emphasize a target note. When you're improvising, typically you're going to be targeting chord tones. There's tons of ways to do this and enclosure is just one of them. And in practice, it can take on different forms with their own flavors or colors. The scale tone above and half step below on each chord tone is gonna to give off a flavor that could maybe be broadly described as Eastern European. It's exactly the same kind of thing Mozart did in the opening phrase of his famous Rondo a la Turca. That title essentially means Turkish style Rondo. The half step below is basically providing a momentary tonicization of each note of the chord, which is very strong and direct. You can just as easily play a scale tone above and below a note you're trying to emphasize. In this case, the targeted note's effect will depend on its context within the key. By the way, the technical term for non-chord tones in this context is auxiliary tones or neighboring tones. Enclosing the root of a chord will usually sound very grounded. Closing the third gives maybe a sense of urgency, like it needs to go somewhere. It has a lot more character. Enclosing the fifth, to me, has a sort of climactic feel, like you'd want to avoid this until you've built up some drama to it. As you enclose the seventh, ninth, etc., things get more colorful. And of course, enclosure licks in the minor pentatonic scale sound awesome. Now another thing to consider is how rhythm plays into this. Up until now I've been playing basically straight 16th notes like the gypsy jazz thing. By placing the upper neighbor on the beat, the target note will be on the 2nd and 4th 16th notes, which are weak moments. Placing the upper neighbor off the beat, like a 16th note before, will cause the target note to be on the strong moments. Neither one is objectively correct, but they'll each produce their own effect. I'm personally a fan of the former because the neighboring tones could be considered tense moments. If you were to hang on them, you can hear the pull to a chord tone. By placing those notes on a beat, you're coupling the tension of that note in the context of the harmony with the strength of that moment in the meter. But in practice, you're unlikely to favor one or the other because you'll probably do both quite frequently. A compelling improvisation uses a variety of these little musical devices. It's what keeps the listener's attention. So, like I said earlier, enclosure is typically a way of targeting chord tones. It's not the only way to do it, of course. Little runs through the scale to a target note are another just as common device. Any non-chord tone you pass over on the way to your target note would be called a passing tone. Typically you want to arrive at the chord tone on a strong beat, but not always. The idea of targeting chord tones is basically as old as tonal music itself. We've had different names for things throughout history, but the gist of it hasn't changed a lot. To show you a bit of how these passing and neighboring tones mix together, I'll play you a segment of the prelude to Bach's sixth cello suite. One of my students has been working on this piece for a while now. This is my favorite section of it.
there you go. So my advice to you is not necessarily to think super literally about things like, now I'm gonna enclose E, now I'm gonna scale run up to G. You can't think and play. But you wanna practice these devices and really get them in your system so you can call upon them at will when you do improvise. Improvisation isn't just making things up. It's a culmination of your understanding of music and what will be effective in the moment. And having a super strong grasp of these sorts of ideas will go a long way in improving your all-around musicianship. So with that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.